Good morning. I'm Reverend Leslie Goodwin, and I'm one of your senior ministers here at New Vision Center. And I want to add my own personal welcome on top of that gorgeous welcome from our host, Karen Blakely. I am so thrilled, and thank you from the bottom of my heart and the bottom of all of our hearts for participating with us through the miracle of technology. We feel you in this space across time and any distance. We feel your love and your consciousness. Please know that you, you, you are a member of this congregation and you are important to us. So please check in and let us know where you're viewing this from and how we can be a deeper, stronger community for you. We are in a fairly new season of topic right now. We're in the summer of joy. And as Tina mentioned during her prayer, we are growing in love and we are grounded in grace. No, one more try. We're grounded in love and growing in grace. We're growing in waistline. Only some of us that are in quarantine, but we're definitely growing in grace. And we have been given this amazing opportunity to grow in graceful ways that, boy, we never could have foreseen. And so it's about darn time for a summer of joy, yeah? I, I think so, I think so. We're all ready for some joy to maybe shake off some of the shackles of stress. And, you know, Sarisa song talked about being happy. And in my world, happy is the first step to joy. Because happy is the emotion we feel in the momentary experience of the joy flashing through. Well, as joy, the truth of joy, is actually the God quality that is ever present, whether we're tuning into it or not. So this talk is really about how do we identify and allow ourselves to have the happy experiences that deepen us into an ongoing experience of joy. So you may know this about me. I'm a futzer. If you do not have Yiddish, get thee some Yiddish. It makes all things better. But futzing is one of those words that's um, so culturally embedded that my husband and I actually had an argument is a strong statement. We had a debate that involved dueling Google phones around definitions because I was saying futzing, you know, futzing is sort of just doing stuff because you want to do it that isn't job related or chores related. You're just futzing about, like futzing about in the garden because, because you want to, but there's no directed payout. And Bobby was insisting that it had a negative connotation, like you're wasting your time. And it went back and forth quite a few times before I realized we're using the same definition. I just don't believe wasting time is possible and refuse to see it as negative. And I thought, isn't that interesting that when I'm talking about what's making me the happiest, I'm talking about the ways in which I am futzing about. So I put it on Facebook, because I'm me, and I put things on Facebook. And I was given all these wonderful examples of what people are doing as they're futzing about in quarantine. So let's look at some of these examples. So this one over here, this is the blanket that I'm crocheting for my sister Lindsay right now. There's now a lineup of list of people who want a blanket. So um, just be aware, if you approach me wanting a blanket, it's going to be a while. Diana, the camera is raising her hand. Okay, you're after Katie, who's after my mom, who's after this blanket. And that's how it goes. But what I wouldn't ever do is start taking orders that have a deadline, because then it's not futzing. Now you're working, right? It's just supposed to be for fun. And then I saw this beautiful Science of Mind teaching symbol mosaic from Audrey Rush, who's a partner in our congregation. And isn't that so gorgeous with all these pieces of glass and mosaic tiles? And then finally, my friend Jill put up this wonderful painting. We took art classes together in college. And she's been doing this fluid painting technique with acrylics. And isn't it wonderful? Now, obviously, these are passions. And by futzing, I don't want to give the impression that it means it's something that doesn't matter or isn't important. What I want to anchor here is the idea that it is important specifically because it isn't what we're doing to survive. That humanity requires another level of happiness, another level of joy to be our fullest. Ernest Holmes, the founder of our teaching, 
said, back of all creativity is the pressure of our own divinity to come forth into the humanity that it created in order to enjoy the fullness of its own expression. Now, when I make that be English, it's there are things of God that can only ever come across if you do God as you. So God as me right now is showing up as a very snuggly blanket. And even when I was all the way this little tiny being, there was godness put into me that might show up as a painting, might show up as a song, might show up as a blanket, might show up as this talk that no one else could ever bring forth except me. And that's not because I'm special. It's true of you and you and you and you. Everybody has this special piece of ourselves. I believe that futzing is the key to unlocking that piece of godness that is deeper and brighter than our culture calls forth. God is calling us from this place, and we find the evidence of what it's calling us to in what we do when we don't want to do the things we're supposed to do. I always have time to crochet another stripe. I may not have time to do the laundry, but I always have time to make another bracelet. I have been known to make new earrings to wear in church, on platform, the morning of church. But my dishes might not be done. Just saying. So, inevitably the question, how do I know if it's God called futzing versus I just don't want to do it and I'm wasting time? This is my answer. Futzing is good for you if it's good for your body, your mind, and your soul. I mean, we go back to body, mind, spirit all the time, right? Even in the ringing of the gong, aligning body, mind, and spirit. So if something is good for us, body, mind, and spirit, we're going to go ahead and trust that it's coming from the one. Yeah? We on board? All right. So, body. There's a reason the saying goes, I've got that joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Right? It doesn't say down in my checkbook. It doesn't say down in my list of verifiable accomplishments that could get me a good job. Right? Down in my heart, we feel joy. We feel the experience of the happiness of futzing in our physical body temples. How does it show up? Shows up as stress relief. A lot of people who say they don't meditate do, and they don't know it. They call it getting in the zone. You know, when you're doing something you love and you lose all track of time and space and you miss a date and you forget to eat, you are in the zone. And that is physiologically very, very similar to meditation. Stress is a major cause of illness and ailment in our society because our culture tells us we should highly prioritize the things that make us money, keep us safe, or look good to others. And I'm here to tell you, I have painted some truly atrocious paintings, joyfully. I mean, if they don't turn out, you just paint over them and you get to have more fun. But when we get caught up in the idea that it's supposed to earn us something or look good to others, we don't let ourselves experience it. And so the stress relief that comes from just expressing ourselves, we don't allow ourselves. And it shows up as digestive issues. It shows up as cardiac problems, headaches, high blood pressure. Ugh. It just shows up as everything that isn't going right in our bodies being exacerbated. Or we could choose to futz and have the endorphins that move through your body naturally when you're happy that lowers your blood pressure, that releases that stress, that calms down those digestive issues, that ceases the tension headaches. It's so simple, but it's true. 
A lot of forms of futzing are physical in nature. Try not to get in better shape growing a garden or painting a large painting or studying dance. Anything that gets us moving from our fingertips to our feet to our whole, whole body. Anything that gets us moving in the direction of just things we enjoy is healing to the body temple. That one's easy, right? It's not hard to imagine that being passionate about yoga is gonna, gonna help with the body. Even though crochet is this, I find that by the end of a session of crochet, my shoulders are lower. I've calmed down. It's so meditative for me. Then we move to the mind. Oh, minds are tricky, aren't they? Our minds want to tell us, no, 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 futzing is wasting time and it's going to create stress. But the truth is, if we let ourselves just do for a period of time, even if we have to give ourselves a concrete period of time, I'll give myself an hour to do this thing that I just want to do for no reason other than that I love it. If we can give a concrete period of time, then it allows us to be mindful of that action and not off planning the next endeavor outside the side corner of our brain. If we don't allow ourselves to have this, what I would call mental time off, that's when we start getting more anxiety, more depression, or the great bane of quarantine, boredom. There are people who are really, really deeply bored, and you might be one of them. I assure you, futzing is a tremendous cure for boredom. You can never be bored while futzing. There are some actually scientifically ver um, verifiable things that futzing about, no matter what it is, actually helps us for with our brain. When we choose to learn a new skill, Say I decide I'm going to learn um, blowing glass. That sounds super fun and hot. If I'm going to decide to go to learn how to blow glass, I'm going to learn all of these new details that are completely fresh to my brain. And you know what helps stave off cognitive decline more than anything else? Learning new skills. It doesn't matter what the skills are. It's just that we continue to be open to the idea that there's more to learn and our neurons continue developing. They used to tell us that you had so many nerve cells and then that's it. It was wrong. It was wrong. We continue to grow new nerve cells, to create new neural networks until the day we die in direct proportion to the amount that we're using them. So we have someone like Frank, who is our music director, who plays, I don't know, 7,800 instruments, I think, and is constantly learning new songs and working with people to write new songs and perform. And he, he was just telling me today, build a new website, and he's doing all this fun teaching stuff. Someone like that is not going to be as likely to suffer cognitive decline as he gets older because he's making a point to allow the things he loves to drive moving forward into new skills. And he's having fun while he's doing it, which is just golden. Also, the other thing that can happen cognitively as we get older is we can tend to kind of close down our opinions so that we just only believe what we have always believed. Um, I'm gonna call it the Archie Bunker syndrome. Perhaps you've met someone who has gone through this. I'm gonna go ahead and assume that you have. Introducing new ideas does the same thing as introducing new skills, except instead of growing neurons for understanding how to do things, it grows neurons for understanding how to integrate new ideas. It keeps our mind open so we can grow as people. So on one side, we're growing as intelligent beings, and on the other side, we're growing as spiritual beings which carries me right into spirit, into the soul part of ourselves. We see that futzing is good for the body. We see that futzing is good for the mind. Can futzing really be a spiritual developmental tool? I assert that yes, it can. And I've got three reasons why. Accepting the need for your particular futz 
my crochet or jewelry making, somebody else's painting, somebody else's tribal dance class, somebody else's yoga, whatever our thing is. I keep thinking of Jolene and her garden. And my friend Amy is doing diamond painting, which all these little diamond dots, it's so cool. Whatever our individual futz is, accepting that it is a necessary part of our own expression means an unconditional acceptance of who we actually are. And that is something that can only happen on the inside of one's own being. Feel into that, an unconditional acceptance of self. Isn't that what brings us to a center like this? The desire to feel at home in our own skin, in our own soul, to be surrounded by community members that agree that who we are is worth knowing, just exactly as we actually are. Oh, I love that. I love that. From that space, there is no such thing as wasting time. You can't waste God. It's not a limited quantity. We can't run out. It's not going anywhere. We're literally made up of it. And so the strengthened acceptance of self is the strengthened acceptance of self as a divine expression. <sighs> Ernest Holmes in the New Thought Dictionary said, Life is a giving of itself in abundance. Nature gives of herself freely for the sheer joy of expression. The important point is to give as an expression of abundant living, not with the idea of getting back in full measure. To give as an expression of abundant living, not to get back. See, that's the difference between doing it because you love it and it brings you joy versus doing it to make money or to impress someone or to earn an accomplishment. Oh, accepting ourselves exactly as we are with no need of evidence from the outside. Oh, delightful. Joy, you see, Ernest says in the textbook that joy is the expectancy of good. And so I think it's reasonable to say that being in a state of joy is being in a state of receivership. Not just a state of knowing that good is coming, but being in the state of being willing to allow it to come and to be willing to receive that good. Not just that it's in the world somewhere, but that it's in the world for me. My form of good, my form of receivership is in this world for me me. When we really feel that, we know it. Um, Ernest called it fire in the belly, that energy that comes up within us that lets us know that yes, yes. And that's the power that drives prayer. That's the power that drives every spiritual manifestation ever. The creative process, it goes through, comes from the idea, and it comes down into through all of our beliefs and thoughts and every good and negative thing we've ever experienced, and it comes down, and I feel like just before it comes to that point, there should be an err, because that's the fire in the belly right before that point at the bottom of the teaching symbol. Yeah! True joy is the divine quality of always having that right there where we know, we know, I know, we say this all the time in prayer, I know that I know that I know that I know that God is here for me, in me, as me, through me. I know. That's that state of fire in the belly. <sighs> deepened joy is deepened godliness. Futzing is a spiritual practice. Because joy is a quality of God. It's an aspect of the divine. It's exactly the same as love and peace and wholeness and unity and wisdom and all of these words that we adore and anchor in as God expressing, so is joy. And every time we take the choice to be more of our truth, 
through those activities that we love, we are choosing to walk God as us. As that good old Ernest Holmes says, we have a song to sing, we have a joy to bring to the world, and love and peace and happiness. Every time we say yes to that song, to that joy, we are joining in the oneness, that one power that is the divine. And we are saying, I am that. Yeah. yeah. And if that's not a prayer, I don't know what is. But let's anchor it in a little bit further. Oh, what a brilliant joy it is to just take this a moment to anchor even more deeply into the goodness that is the one power, the one presence that is divine spirit, sweet goodness, life, love, peace, grace, creativity. And what I know is that this truth, this divine truth is in and through and as and with every beloved who ever participates in this service. Now we're in the future and each that we love and each that they love so that it ripples out across this planet and beyond, touching every soul, touching every life. I know for each of us a profound wholeness in our mind, in our body, in our spirit that serves us with exactly whatever we need to thrive today and always. I know a deep abundance pouring forth for each one of us whatever is needed that we are all safe, fed, loved. Mm. I speak a blessing over each of us and know that it is profoundly good, profoundly good, and I call it so as we say together, and so it is. <laughs>